And it's that time again. I'm that guy that does the thing at the time. My name is Matt. This is your Daily Crypto News. And this is Thursday, July 18th, 2024. Remember, send me an email. Show me some love. Matt at DailyCryptoNews.net. And follow us on at DCN Daily Crypto on Twitter or Substack or wherever. Just follow us. Anyway, let's get into it. Donald Trump. We're going to start this with politics. We're going to start this with Donald Trump because Donald Trump in a lot of people's minds is an enigma. What is going to happen with crypto if he is president? We absolutely know what's going on with Joe Biden. We understand how his administration looks at crypto, but we're not too sure about Donald. Why? Because he's been all over the place. Well, Mike Brock, he's an executive at Block Inc., And he said that Donald Trump wanted to ban Bitcoin. But former U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, stopped him. He said that Trump tried to ban Bitcoin in 2020 until Steve Mnuchin and a group of people in the administration slow walked his wishes. And they did that to preserve American competitiveness and innovation. He said, I was invited to the meeting. And yes, I'm violating the confidence of those conversations. A Twitter user asked him, though, Are you suggesting that people can't change their minds? And he replied, Trump doesn't believe in anything but himself. And tweeted, Trump doesn't give a shit about Bitcoin. He sized up a bunch of people who he saw as an easy fundraising and constituency for him to win. He will walk into the White House and immediately begin the process of doing to them what he's done to every other constituency he's courted, leaving them out to dry. And he's referring to David Sachs, Jamath Pihapatia, and other people in Silicon Valley, Peter Thiel, who are pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto, and the Fair Shake Pack, who has been funding and raising a lot of money for pro-crypto candidates. One thing I want you to read is a New York Times article about J.D. Vance, his connections to Peter Thiel and tech billionaires, and their push to get J.D. Vance into office. And not just to become vice president, but also we're very supportive of his run for Senate in 2022 here in Ohio against Tim Ryan. Well, here in Ohio, where I'm from Ohio. I'm not in Ohio right now, but you know what I'm saying. So who is Mike Brock? And is this just partisan rhetoric? Well, Mike has so far donated around $22,250 to political action committees that back President Joe Biden and Democrats. The most recent was a $2,000 donation to the Biden Victory Fund. But for what it's worth, he also made a $2,752.54 donation to the conservative backing Win Red Pack, which earmarked money for the Chris Christie for President Fund. Now, taking all of that into consideration, it looks like he is obviously a Democrat that backs Joe Biden that does not like Trump, hence why he was supporting Chris Christie. But does he have any validity to his argument? Again, I'm going to have to say I'm neutral on this. I have no clue what Trump's going to do with crypto. He wasn't for crypto in 2019. He said he's not a fan of Bitcoin. He doesn't understand it. Can people change? They can. But there was no legislation to support it in the four years he was president. But he has a lot of people in his cabinet, a lot of people who are donating, a lot of people now surrounding him. He has used Ethereum, NFTs as well. So is he changing his mind? Does he see utility? Does he see innovation and growth within the economy in this sector? Time will tell. I think it's very reasonable to be skeptical. I think it's very reasonable to see what happens, but I wouldn't say that he's going to be pro-crypto. I also don't think that it's reasonable to say he's going to be anti-crypto. We just really don't know. My favorite article of the day, obviously links are in the show notes, is entitled, Why is Ryan Selkis so angry? And Ryan Selkis is the Masari CEO, and he jumped from supporting Biden in 2020 to being very Trump in 2024. And this is an interesting article. I have talked to Ryan a couple times. Uh, We talked about politics. We've talked about crypto and other things. And the fact is, is he will fight anybody that's trying to fight his industry. He's put a lot of work, blood, sweat, and tears into his company. He is staunchly in crypto. He's supporting his life, his livelihood, many employees because of this industry. And so if he doesn't fight for it, he loses everything. And that's exactly where his mindset is. It's fight or flight. And that's why when he goes out there and says, our national leaders are pussies, and he challenges Mark Cuban, who is pro-crypto, but doesn't like Ryan Selkis, he challenges him to duke it out. 
He calls Gary Gensler a rat, a snake, a liar, a fraud, a loser, beta, a toady, a sociopath, and the Grinch. And he says that the government and his proxies deserve total wrath. People can say that he's angry, but honestly, I see somebody who's trying to support the industry and people who are trying to take down something that he's built. What do you think? Matt at DailyCryptoNews.net. We have some Polygon news. Polygon developers, they've scheduled the Matic to poll token swap to begin in September 4th. So Polygon developers decided to include a tradition from the current Matic token to a poll token in a major protocol upgrade. The token swap is part of a broader move for Polygon to become a network of networks. The team has touted this as the third generation token, meaning that Bitcoin was the first generation, Ethereum was the second, and now apparently Polygon is the third. So users holding the Matic on Polygon's proof of stake blockchain will have the tokens upgraded to Pole with no action required on their part. However, it looks like if it's Ethereum and ZK EVM or Zero Knowledge Ethereum Virtual Machine, then you're going to have to take action. They also mentioned centralized exchanges. And so I think that we just need to wait a little bit longer because the news broke today that this is going to happen on September 4th. Uh, I think that a lot of centralized exchanges are going to get on board and help you do some swaps. I don't know about the ZK EVM. However, um, I think that we just need to wait and see how this develops because usually centralized exchanges will help you do a swap and we will see how that works out. Obviously, when we get more news, we'll report it here. On the same token, ha, huh, very punny. As of August 5th, 2024, collectible expressions will no longer be supported on Reddit. In some instances, you might be able to view them on past comments, but they can't be used in comments moving forward. Collectible expressions built on Reddit's collectible avatars, a series of non-fungible tokens, is on the Polygon blockchain. Now, this has nothing to do with the swap, from what I can read, but they're just dropping this. So if you're a collectible expressions on Reddit, expressions collectible collector, then you're going to have, then they're not going to be supported after August 5th. According to Dune Analytics dashboard, over 33 million collectible avatars have been minted to date with a market cap of around 43 million. Bankrupt crypto lender BlockFi. It will begin its interim crypto distributions to creditors through Coinbase starting this month. The distributions will be processed in batches in the coming months, and eligible clients will receive a notification to the BlockFi account email on file. Please note that non-U.S. clients are unable to receive funds at this time due to regulatory requirements, which is complete BS. I'm sorry for non-U.S. clients, but the way this is going to work is that they'll begin processing withdrawals from wallet customers first, followed by distributions for BlockFi interest accounts and loan customers. So there is a couple of different products in BlockFi. There's the wallet customers. Basically, they just held their crypto in a wallet. So you put a Bitcoin in, you have a Bitcoin. There was the interest account, which if you put a Bitcoin in and you wanted to get interest on it, which then it was held by BlockFi and they paid you interest to basically loan out your Bitcoin. And then there's the loan customers who put up collateral for loans and they got money, fiat money to do whatever they want with. But then, of course, they had to pay that back anyway. If you're a wallet customer, you're going to get that first. And the BlockFi interest account and loan customers will get that next. They'll recover anywhere from 39.4% to 100% of their funds. And that depends on the outcome of the FTX bankruptcy proceedings and the value of BlockFi's equity in Robinhood. And finally, Bitcoin ETF extends its winning streak to nine days. And so what does that mean to the price? Let's take a look right now. And the time is 8.51 a.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time. Fear Greed is at 57. We're neutral. And that's because number go down, even though we're on a nine-day, I guess, winning streak. But number go down. It's $63,750 for Bitcoin, down 1.8% in 24. Ethereum is at $3,400, down 1.4. Tellers number three, Binance is at 5.67, down 1.2. And Solana is at 157 down 1%. Running off the top 10, we have USDC XRP at 56.8, down 6.5. Oops. 
Tonecoin's at 716, down 1.6. Dogecoin is at 11.8, down 4.1. And Cardano is at 42.7 cents, down almost 5%. The total market cap is down almost 2% at 2.34 trillion. Bitcoin dominance, 53.9. ETH dominance, 17.5. That's our show. My name is Matt. Sarah will be back tomorrow. And until then, happy hodling, everyone.